What's going on YouTube? My name is Jay Lee and I like a lot of stuff. Today I'm talking about Bullet Train starring Brad Pitt which is now available to stream on demand. Ever since the first John Wick movie changed action on the silver screen, there appears to be a yearly entry into the overly choreographed, hard-hitting, realistic action genre. Nobody essentially recycled the entire premise for the first John Wick movie, including the movie poster. Extraction gave Chris Hemsworth the chance to swing a big gun rather than a magical hammer. Now we have Bullet Train, which is like a neon Japan infused John Wick if directed by Edgar Wright. It's pretty fun overall, but it takes a long while to get where it's going. Oh the irony. I'll start with what I liked about the movie. Brad Pitt. With the long-standing illustrious career that he's had, it's no surprise that when he's on screen, you just want to smile. He's so damn likable, especially when he's playing these offbeat, quirky characters like in Burn After Reading or the recent Sandra Bullock comedy, The Lost City. His funniest scene, sadly, was already shown in the trailer, but it still hits during the movie. The rest of the cast is pretty solid as well. Brian Tyree Henry adopts a British accent as a brother duo opposite Aaron Taylor Johnson. It's fun to watch, but he's got this Thomas the Train shtick, which was a bit forced funny, if you ask me. Even though there is some payoff to the gag, so much of this movie feels excessive. And sadly, there are many more instances like that building up to something meant to be impactful or affecting, but just aren't. When the movie is slogging on from fight scene after fight scene, introducing random character after random character, then looping back to somehow integrate them into the wider narrative, I found it exhausting and not always interesting. There are subplots under subplots that are simple enough, but like I said, they're just not provoking enough to really care about. In my Arcane review, I talked about how style without substance doesn't find success. Well, Bullet Train fails in that regard. It has a vibrant and varied color palette and is edited in that fast cut sweeping transition style that we're all kind of numb to by now. The movie does demonstrate a lot of personality, but we've seen these tropes and stylish elements to death. Splash screens introducing characters, fast talking Brits with cheeky dialogue, the skilled but unwilling everyman who's kind of forced into the scenario. It all feels very formulaic and I found myself kind of bored every time a new trope was violently thrown on screen. And speaking of violence, the action itself was really nothing special. This isn't to say that I always need groundbreaking gunplay or innovative hand-to-hand -hand choreography. It just felt slow and kind of bland. Having Hiroyuki Sonata in any movie usually elevates it so much. Yep, even you Mortal Kombat. Give the man a katana and magic usually happens. But this time I really think he's one of the least interesting elements of this movie, which is saying a lot because there's a lofty cast of characters. Look, Bullet Train isn't the worst movie you can throw on right now, but it just isn't super memorable. There's some fun to be had, especially due to some pretty awesome cameos, but the film being as long as it is, it does wear out its welcome long before the train makes its last stop. I say watch it in the background or if you, you know, partake. <coughs> You might find it more interesting than I did. I'm gonna give Bullet Train a 5.5 out of 10. Amidst all the Halloween horror stuff, I am trying to finish watching Andor right now, so hopefully that review is gonna come soon. Otherwise, come back soon to catch my thoughts on all the stuff I haven't talked about yet.